All right, guys. Today I'm going to be talking about an upcoming ICO called Data Fund. And if you followed my Twitter, you'll know that data on the blockchain is probably one of my favorite use cases. It makes perfect sense. And if you ask me, um, the business and corporate implementation of data on blockchain is going to be one of the first use cases that actually happens and gets used, um, which is exciting. So data fund, uh, let's start just by reading what they plan to do. Um, they are a protocol that guards personal data and provides safe storage and enables ethica, ethical data exchange. Uh, individuals create their own data fund to reclaim, own, and manage their data. And a data fund is defined as a data set saved or made available for a particular purpose. So basically what they want to do is empower people to control and manage their own data. And in order to do that, a person creates a data fund. And then this data fund will have certain um, functions within their network and their applications. And uh, they have this paradigm about uh, data as labor. And so effectively what they want to do is make it so that the more work you put into uh, organizing and keeping track of your data in a timely and efficient manner, the more value it will have in terms of the more companies will be willing to pay for it. Um, data Fund is being built on Ethereum and Swarm, and they have a partnership with Swarm, which is great to see. Um, they're clearly well plugged into the industry and have really key partnerships. Um, so one of the key value propositions they have is that they are GDPR compliant and privacy centric, which of course can be really important for businesses who want to use it. And they also have really key partnerships in this regard as well as they're partnered with Etherisk, which is um, an insurance blockchain project and so they're they're definitely taking a lot of time and effort to make sure that they're compliant and they're not going to have any issues legally. Um, they're definitely ready for large-scale business opportunities which is another big value proposition um, that I see they're focused on earning money from the B2B aspect and also providing some not-for-profit um, options and use cases um, so that they're giving back and they clearly have this um, moral and ethical drive and mission within their actual company. So um, here's a little diagram of what it's going to look like with the protocol um, having some privacy barriers. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, here's the tech stack, Swarm and Ethereum, like we mentioned before. Um, let's look at the roadmap a little bit. Uh, the roadmap is very robust. It's very uh, detailed, and it is categorized, which I really like. Oftentimes, roadmaps seem a bit lazy in this space, where it's just kind of like, in Q1, we're going to do this. In Q2, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of group things into big, vague um, ideas. And with this... You know, they've categorized it into the different aspects and even breaking down different, you know, components within the technology and, and then also focusing on the foundation, which is clearly important because they want to run as a decentralized, you know, organization. So the roadmap really looks very professional. I like it quite a bit. Um, they already have the beta. They're already testing. So that's also really great to see. Um, the mobile beta is going to be coming soon. The mobile alpha is already out also. Um, the wallet too. So they've got a lot of stuff going on already and they've clearly put in a lot of work. And it's really nice to see an ICO come out like this that um, has some money behind it already. Um, they have some, some funds behind Columbus Capital as a European blockchain fund. Um, so they, they seem to have some private equity funding already from the start which makes perfect sense because their team is quite well connected and uh, and that's great to see because they've put in a lot of work they have a big team they already have 19 people on their team and I'm gonna go into more detail about their team and the advisors soon 
Um, but it's nice to see that they're not kind of scraping for funds. Like they're already working, they're going to have a product, and because of this, it seems like their hard cap is quite reasonable, which is really nice. So let's talk a little bit about those token economics. Uh, 12 million USD hard cap. Um, the one flaw that I have with it is, the one issue I have is that there's quite a bit of money going to the team, 20%. Um, it's unclear how much of the team gets that 20%. Sorry, I'm just scrolling down to the pie chart. But, um, you know, if it's if it's distributed between that the whole team, all 19 members, then 20% is all right. Um, generally, my feeling with ICOs is that the original founders and core core guys end up getting a lot of those those tokens um, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt because they do seem to be uh, an ethical and fair team um, but they have a lot of the tokens uh, planned for the ecosystem and partnerships which makes a lot of sense because they're going to need to give a lot of them to businesses to incentivize them to test out this new technology um, they've saved some for the foundation which is a good move as well I think so I think it's a reasonable distribution and then in terms of the use of the funds, I like that most of it is delegated to the tech development and the business development. Um, I'm a little concerned that only a small amount is delegated to marketing, but I think this is because they have some marketing partnerships already and they have a lot of connections. It's an experienced team, so I get the feeling that a lot of the marketing will actually be you know, um, them talking to their connections and doing business-to-business -business deals, which is where their profit will come from. And uh, I want to scroll back up, actually, to where they talk about their income streams, which is something you surprisingly rarely see in a white paper um, or even in any ICO presentation. And this is actually their business paper, which I really like because it's more of a deck and it explains the project really well. Um, as opposed to white papers, which can be quite technical and dense and difficult, I think, for a lot of people, including myself, to read sometimes. Uh, where exactly was that? <laughs> uh, maybe it's not here. Here we go. Command F, much better than scrolling. So I really like this aspect of it. They've got their for-profit streams and their not-for-profit streams. So you know they definitely want to do commercial applications, and that's where the big money is at. It makes perfect sense. You know they're going to supply the technology and the expertise for allowing businesses that are going to end up with a lot of data to properly manage and monetize that data, which is becoming more and more important. So you got ID system, uh, automation for being GDPR compliant you know, the data wallets, the data marketplaces, because once you have all this data, you need a place to store it and sell it. And if they do this right, they should have a very user-friendly um, data wallet for users, and they should have a nice, robust backend for companies to be able to manage the data of their users and the marketplaces. And, you know, in my in my vision, I imagine that a lot of users aren't going to actually want to spend so much time managing their own data, and so I feel like there will be options for users to um, grant certain companies the rights to manage and, and sell their data, and you'll have kind of these intermediaries that optimize the value of data, and so having a decentralized open system really makes a lot of sense for that. Uh, data enrichment, which I think goes back to you know uh, cultivating your data funds, which allows you to make your data as good and valuable as you can. Loyalty schemes, which of course makes perfect sense. Uh, you know you're gonna have you're gonna have the ability to say, hey, if you continually you know manage your data through us and and give your data to our partners, then we can give you a better deal, et cetera, et cetera. And then they've got not-for-profit streams, which is cool. Um, you know, they have some guys in their team and, and on their advisors that are into the open source community, which I really like because that's kind of at the core of what blockchain is all about. Um, they're going to be making people aware of privacy. They've got this ethical mission baked into what they're doing, you know, ethical data exchange. So I really like that aspect of what they're doing. Um, so let's go to they. Who are they? 
Uh, Michael Modic. Um, I'm probably going to pronounce a lot of these names incorrectly, so I apologize. They are from Slovenia, and I do not have much experience uh, <laughs> dealing with Slovenian names. So this is the CEO, and he seems to be a business guy, and he's got a fair amount of management um, experience. Pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it seems like he's the guy who can get the job done. Uh, this guy right here, Zenel Batelgej, Batelgej, I'm not even going to try to <laughs> to pronounce these anymore. This guy, he's one of the founders and he's the, the chief strategist and he seems to be one of the key guys. Um, he's been a partner at this uh this company called Valicon, which is a, a consumer data company um, for 11 years. So he clearly knows the industry they're in, and that's great to see a lot of industry experience. He also has blockchain experience. He was working with CoFounded for Team Strategy, although that's not necessarily the best endorsement since CoFounded just um, quit, uh, folded, whatever you want to call it. He was also strategy advisor for Economy, so he's been in on some good projects, and they've been running Data Fund for over a couple years now, which is great to see. Um, he's an experienced guy. He's got a master's, so I really like this guy as one of their key core founders. Um, this guy is one of the protocol and foundation guys, uh, and he's sort of a finance and a startup guy, which is good to see because um, he'll have experience in that realm, and um, and I think you need that for sure. And now they're tech guys, so they've got two guys named Todd Edge, which is nice. I don't know if Todd Edge is a common name in Slovenia, but they've got two of them. Um, and these guys both have a significant amount of experience as programmers and and software developers. So um, I really I really think they've got a really solid team. And Slovenia is known for bringing quality into the blockchain space. Um, Let's look at their advisors. Uh, speaking of Slovenia, they've got a, a guy who was also an advisor for Origin Trail, which was quite a hyped and seemingly successful um, oops, um, ICO that was back in, I think, February. So that's good to see. Uh, they also have a, the Dow Stack CEO, um, which is great because he's like a really smart, academic, like deep research kind of guy who who's doing decentralized autonomous organizations. And then they've got um, advisors that are doing, um, one of them's an open source guy, one of them's a blockchain dev, they got the lawyer, so they've got a, a well-rounded team of advisors. Um, I kind of forgot to talk about the token usage, which is of course important. Um, so the DEX token is an ERC-777, which is ERC-20 compatible. I guess it's just a newer format. I don't know so much about that. I'm sure there's reasons for it. And its main functions are for staking and decentralized governance. It also um, can be used for payments, but this is optional. And this is good to see because when a token's primary use is payments, it means that it has a very low velocity uh, which means that the token will go in and out of the hands and it won't be held for very long. And that really means there's not much reason to use it. And so they're aware of that and they recognize that maybe some people want to use their token for payment, but if not, it's not going to be mandatory. And the real reason for the token will be the governance and staking, um, which will allow the network to be run and managed, which is of course necessary in any decentralized network. And so it seems like they have their finger on the pulse and they understand tokenomics, they understand token utility. So I really like this team. I really like this project. Um, I really like their partnerships. Um, that's one more thing we didn't go too deep into. Yeah, like I said, they've got some finance guys. They've got, um, they've got some blockchain guys, a partnership with Swarm. I think I did talk about this actually. Uh, they've got the, the blockchain insurance um, they've got a blockchain research company as well. They've got a crypto payments company. So yeah, this is a really strong looking project and I definitely recommend that you check them out. Uh, datafund.io is their website. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some value from it and uh, have a nice day. Peace.